we have internet at this hangar, but not that one that is 200 feet away. And this main one has the internet, it has a unified router and security cameras. Now, if we want to control the security cameras under one unified system, we need to get both buildings in one network. Although I can, I'm not going to use a dedicated building bridge. Instead, I'm going to use this one unified device that can still bridge both buildings, but also provide great Wi-Fi coverage. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Chaperny, founder of Apex One IT. We do networking and security. So yes, there are dedicated bridging devices that you can use. For example, Ubiquiti has their UISP line and a popular one is to use the Nanobeam 5AC. Okay, that is kind of cost effective, but you do have to use a different app in order to manage it if you want to continuously manage it. You do want to use a unified device if you want to manage it all under that unified dashboard. So you can do something like the UDB Pro that's around $200 each unit, or you can go up to something like the UBB Pro Unified Building Bridge, which is $500 for one or a thousand for a set of two. Those Unify bridging devices are a bit overkill for this second hangar that I'm at because all that's needed here is just a single security camera and some Wi-Fi. So here what we installed is a pair of U6 Mesh Pros. They're $200 each. I'll show you what they can do in a minute, but this here is the child device. So kind of on the receiving side where there is no internet at all. And then way out there, like 220 feet I measured, is the source unit, the parent device. In this video, I'll show you the complete solution. We'll review the diagram. I'll show you a bit of the install and we'll do a performance test at this receiving or this second building here. Okay, here's our diagram. Here's our U6 mesh pros, right? Our two units, our main building right here and our secondary kind of remote building there. So we have this dish and this is a satellite dish. We're using Starlink, a Starlink mini specifically. And you know, there's some satellites up there shooting down here. That's cool. And into space, we're able to get 250 megabits per second down, download speeds and about 40 up, okay, roughly. You can probably kind of count on that. Now, okay, it's powered, just our straight power connected to an outlet and our data. So the Starlink is getting data here and it's going down this blue line into our unified console, unified gateway, it's our router, okay? This specifically is called a UDR. It has a couple switch ports on the back, like four of them, and it has some internal memory. Actually, that's a micro SD, because it's also not just running our network, it's not just like a router, it's also running Unified Protect to run uh, these security cameras, even this one in the second remote building. It's also, right, getting power as it should. And let me maybe just first explain the camera here. So this camera, specifically needs PoE plus. So it can be powered off this unified console itself, the CDR, and use a PoE plus injector. So the injector gets power, okay, that's this yellow line here. And it also needs data though, so that's this blue line, right? So now this guy has power and data. You mix some yellow and blue, you get green. And so that's why this camera now is both online and has power. Now in a similar way, there's a specific kind of PoE injector here, but it's a 48 volt injector. So it goes into power. And now when you data, right? So it goes back to your router and gets the data. And well, this guy here is just a search protection. It doesn't matter if it's there or not for uh, this purpose, but now our little green line goes up here to our U6 Mesh Pro. Okay, so now this guy has data, which not just locally, but it's connected to our internet via Starlink and it has power, okay? from this 48 volt injector. And at this point, you know, just looking at this building, we would already have Wi-Fi here, right? So this guy provides great Wi-Fi. It's outside the building, but actually in this case, this UDR also has Wi-Fi built in. So we have great coverage inside and outside at this main building. So now over to our second building here on the right. So we have a similar way, right? We're gaining power to this 48 volt injector through our surge protector. You'll notice this, this is in yellow because this is just powered. It's not getting data through here, right? So our U6 Mesh Pro is powered, but there's no data connection. It'll still, you know, it'll still can send out a Wi-Fi signal, but it's not, it's not connecting anything here yet. So the way it gets data is, you guess it through this blue dotted line, because it's wireless, right? Via Wi-Fi meshing, this guy, 
and what we call a parent. So this parent AP or access point, wireless access point to this child one in building two here, they're strong enough and close enough that they can communicate together. And typically I know for this one, at least it's at five gigahertz. And so at 230 feet in this example, it works great, right? I'll show you the performance test here in a moment, but that's how this U6 Mesh Pro gets its data. And now that we have a data connection, we have a second port on this U6 Mesh Pro. And in this case, I'm just powering in this, all that the customer needed is one additional camera. Okay, so there's another PoE injector, right? The data is coming in through here, powered through here and to the camera. Okay, and that's just because this camera happens to need just PoE power for this. It doesn't actually just have to be one camera, you know, you could actually drop if, uh, if you wanted to. Instead of that, you could connect a whole like 48 port switch here as well. That's no problem. I mean, you might have some bandwidth limitations here for sure, but you can also, you know, have an uplink to a switch in the secondary building and run additional cameras, right? More than one camera, no problem. Before I continue, if these diagrams are helpful to you, please like the video and let me show you one more cool thing here. So I do have, you know, it says U6 Mesh Pro and that is what I'm using in this installation and this deployment. But the truth is it actually doesn't have to be a U6 Mesh Pro. It can be, I think at this point, it's nearly any unified access point that supports meshing. And what I'm trying to say is nearly all of them, I think, do support meshing. And it comes down to what distance you're trying to cover. So here is 230 feet, but you know, maybe if you're going a little bit further, you need a different unified access point. You can go to design.ui.com, Unified Design Center. And here, let's check this out. Here's my U6, this is our main building, U6 Mesh Pro, and another one right there. Okay, and if I turn on Wi-Fi, and this is at five gigahertz. See, I can see this connection is going to be great. No problem, that's why, this is what I did before I deployed this, right? I just dropped it in here make sure it'll work and we'll do a performance test here in a second, but this works great. But you can go here and let's say maybe you need needed more distance. So let's go Wi-Fi, probably outdoor, right? And we can do this U7 outdoor, for example. You can see what kind of, um, how directional it is here. So maybe if I had a hangar way out there, you know, I could have used maybe two of these, even from this main distance and that would have been fine. Okay, so that's what I would use here to test it out. And I'll have up on the screen for you somewhere here where I show you how to use Unified Design Center. But I would definitely try that out. I think in this case, actually I think this product was out. I had this deployed for nearly a year now, but this one, it's a great device, but you need a PoE injector at least for this. I think it's even a PoE plus, yeah. So just some things to consider. And again, even if you can get a you know specific, some other access point here, you still want to think about your kind of bandwidth limitations. We're working with here, you know, I guess in, in some places those will be considered fast internet. By my area, you know, 1000 megabits per second is considered fast. This, this is no bottleneck for this mesh network here, this mesh wireless connection. That's the kind of thing you want to think about when you're selecting if you want to even go with this meshing or if you want to go with a true building bridge. But if you do want to go with the U6 mesh, for example, you know, just some things to know here is that it is Wi-Fi 6, 2000 square foot, you know, probably good in most cases, I would say. And like I mentioned in the box, you know, there's everything here for mounting. You have your 48 volt injector and it can be surface mounted as well and pole mounted. And that's what I'll show you here. I'm using a kind of just for demo purposes, like three quarter inch pipe or conduit here, but you, it's real designed for a one inch to 2.5 inch. It just snaps on and locks in place and you're good to go. You, well, first you actually want to connect the ethernet cable. So you just remove that and the grommet, pass it through. And then with the two ports, there's that PoE in, that's for the device itself. And it does come with its own PoE injector, at least the U6 Mesh Pro. And the other port is to connect a switch, a camera, whatever else, but it is not, uh, you know, it doesn't provide any PoE over that port. And then it all closes up nicely and you got your weatherproofing. Okay, so here it's probably the hardest part is deciding how you're going to install this. And I'm using standard kind of EMT hardware, EMT conduits. These are hangers, um, single points. And because of this sheet metal, I needed this back plate with some toggle bolts to really hold it down well. And then towards the bottom, I also installed these two hole straps uh, for EMT conduit. One's going to a back plate um, the same way. And one's going to that structural piece, uh, that brick kind of red color. So I'm using toggle bolts here again. 
And I figured I probably just need these two points and that's gonna be way more than enough you know, to hold this during the strongest winds because it is about 10 feet off the ceiling there. Although if it was up to me, I would use like one and a half inch diameter conduit here. But the customer just wanted me to use what they had. I'm here about 10 feet directly underneath the U6 Mesh Pro. Let's just see what kind of speed we can get to this source or parents device. So you see our signal strength, pretty good, minus 40. So let's go to speed here and start a speed test. Okay, so this is now to the U6 Mesh Pro, the parent. I'm not in a deal location 10 feet directly under it, but man, these internet speed tests are not always reliable. Okay, so I'm getting 40 down, 20 up. I'm going to run two more times and I'll just let you know what it is. Okay, now 66 down, 16 up. Let's do it one more time. And 54 down, 26 up. I'm now at the second hanger. And if we run a speed test, I'm also, I'm kind of behind the unit to the side of it, eight feet, I would say. Let's do a speed test. So we should see similar results. That means we don't have a bottleneck with this mesh setup. And right now I'm already reading 60 down. Okay, and already 15, 15, 19, 20 up. Okay, so I can really tell there, there's no bottleneck there. Let's jump to our Unify app. We can go to our devices. Let's go to the receiver, which is where I am here. Okay, if we scroll all the way down, we see our parent device, so our connection to the parent device is telling us our signal is minus 60 dBm, which is good, okay? That's why it's in green. And our transmission and receiving rates are the same, around 230 megabits per second. Now, in the app here, it kind of doesn't refresh that often, but if you go on unified.ui.com, you can actually go there and it kind of refreshes every about every second. So you can really see how it's changing. You can also click here and you'll see the signal's good. As you move around, you should see that change. So that's kind of all the numbers, but you know, what does it practically look like? Practically, I want to be able to jump here to our camera that's called Hanger Source right here. And quite easily, some of fiddling around I did, but quite easily, I should be able to see that time lapse, no problem super smooth and this is just on auto playback i can jump back to the camera on the other hanger no problem view the feed let's go live instantly it's live no delay that's really what i care about and if someone's actually here they're on their phone they want to stream some music watch a video on their laptop they can do that no problem reach out for a consultation using the link in the video description i can help you decide if this type of solution will work for your project and if you need internet 24 seven, make sure it doesn't go down just like this location here has. Then watch this video next where I show you how to set up Starlink with a unified console. I'll see you there.